I recently acquired a Radio Shack TRS-80 pocket computer, including printer and cassette tape interface. As I thought this was quite an innovative product when it was introduced, I thought I would make a video documenting something about its history, features, and a demonstration of it operating. Fans of retro computing may be interested in this early example of a handheld computer. The TRS-80 Pocket Computer was the name given to a portable computer manufactured for Radio Shack by Sharp Corporation and introduced in 1980. Featuring a one-line, 24-character LCD display, it ran on batteries and was small enough to fit in a pocket. It was programmed in the basic computer language, much like desktop microcomputers of the same era, distinguishing it from programmable calculators. Programs and data could be stored on a cassette tape through an optional external tape interface. A combined printer and cassette interface was also available, which used an ink ribbon and rolls of plain paper. This model became known as the PC-1 after subsequent models were introduced as the PC-2 through PC-8, all of which were manufactured for Radio Shack by either Sharp or Casio. The unit originally retailed for US $249.95 in 1980, which would be roughly equivalent to about $700 today. The optional cassette interface was $49, and the combined printer and cassette interface was $149. The calculator internally has two 4-bit CPUs, one acting as the main CPU and the other managing input-output in the display. It has 1.5 kilobytes of RAM and a basic interpreter in ROM. The display is a 24-character by one-line alphanumeric LCD, and it has calculator-type keys with QWERTY layout alphanumeric keys. The memory supports basic programs with up to 1,424 steps with 26 variables named A through Z or A dollars through Z dollars of strings and another 178 variables shared with program memory. Calculations can display numbers in scientific format with a 10-digit mantissa and 2-digit exponent. Battery life is around 300 hours using four 1.35 volt button cells. The batteries back up the internal memory. It has an integrated beeper and a connector for the optional printer and or cassette tape. The software is a little unusual differing from both a calculator and a desktop computer. It cannot operate like a standard algebraic calculator but can only be programmed using BASIC. It has four modes. Run mode allows evaluating basic expressions and commands immediately without line numbers. Program mode is used for entering and editing basic programs. Definable mode is used for running what are known as defined programs. And reserve program mode allows running definable programs associated with a specific key. I'll show examples in the demonstration later in the video. One of the issues with the basic programming language has always been the lack of standardization. The BASIC on the pocket computer is reasonably standard but has a number of quirks and unique features. Only 26 variables are supported named A through Z or A dollars through Z dollars if strings. Only one array is permitted called A and it shares storage with the variables A through Z. It supports about 14 functions including math and trigonometric functions and about 35 basic keywords. Some quirks include using some symbols like a square root symbol and pi rather than letters like SQRT. You can abbreviate basic keywords by just typing the first letter and a period. For example, P dot for print. The main advantage of basic is its ease of learning and use. And despite the limitations of memory, the pocket computer still supports programming reasonably large programs. At the time that it was introduced, calculators were either fixed function or if programmable used reverse Polish notation which most people found harder to learn. Let's look at some examples of basic operation. The display shows the current mode. 
You can cycle through the modes with the mode key. It also shows the current mode for trig units, either degrees, radians, or gradients. Manual calculations can be entered in run mode. There's no need to use a line number or even a print statement. The expressions are evaluated and the result displayed. Here are some examples. The sine of 45 degrees. That's the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared. Two times ten to the ninth times pi. You can also use variables. The error messages are not very sophisticated. When entering a line, you can edit it using the arrow keys with insert and delete keys to insert and delete. Now let's take a look at entering and running programs in program mode. You put it in program mode and enter basic programs with line numbers. You can display the program with list and use the up and down arrow keys to see program lines and edit them. You can then go into run mode and execute the program with a run command. As an example, I've written an electrical engineering program that calculates the resonant frequency of an LC circuit. You enter values for the C and L parameters and it calculates the resonant frequency. It's only five lines of code. After entering it in program mode, we can go to run mode and type run to execute it. Finally, let's try defined program mode. Notice the first line in the program started with a string A. This causes the program to be assigned to the A key. If we go into defined program mode and type shift A, the program will run. When I bought my unit, I also got the optional printer and cassette interface. The computer slides into the interface after removing a cover on the left side and inserting it into the bottom of the interface. To use the cassette interface, you need to connect it to a portable cassette recorder. A couple of Radio Shack models are recommended, but it should work with most standard recorders. You connect cables from the interface to the mic, earphone, and remote, if present, jacks of the recorder. Then turn on the interface and then the computer. Programs can be saved using the csave command and a file name. They can be loaded back with the cload command. You can also read a program and verify that it matches what's in memory, send the output of print statements to the tape, or chain a program at runtime to another program on tape. 
I won't actually go through all the steps of saving and loading, but if I just run a save command, you can hear the tones come out of a small speaker in the interface. In practice, using a tape for storage was slow and unreliable, but it was inexpensive and it was the only type of mass storage available for the pocket computer. I also have the optional printer. It uses an ink ribbon and rolls of paper, similar to an adding machine. It's a dot matrix type that prints 16 characters per line. There's an internal set of NICAD batteries or it can run on AC power. To use it, turn on the power switch and the print switch. Then turn on the computer by pressing the on switch twice. Now the computer's output, such as from the print and list commands, will also go to the printer. Let's list the program we ran earlier. As I'll explain later, this unit's battery is not charging and I tend to get a low battery error before it can finish printing. Science fiction writer Isaac Asimov was featured in an advertisement shown here for the TRS-80 pocket computer with the tagline, A few years ago the idea of a computer you could put in your pocket was just science fiction. I don't know if he ever used the pocket computer, but he did use a desktop TRS-80 system for some of his writing. A TRS-80 pocket computer was part of the equipment worn by one of the characters in the original Ghostbusters movie. Radio Shack offered a number of programs for purchase. I imagine that the programs for engineering and finance could not be very sophisticated in order to fit within the limitations of the device. I picked up this unit in February 2014 at a thrift shop. The previous owner had kept all of the original boxes and manuals. The computer needed new batteries. Fortunately, they're a low-cost type available at dollar stores. After that, it worked, although there is some black on the edges of the LCD. This was a common problem with these units. I also got the optional printer and cassette interface. The ink cartridge had dried out. Some research indicated that there are still sources to obtain them. For now I used an old trick to reactivate ribbons for a while by putting some W40 on it. The internal rechargeable NICAD batteries for the cassette interface also don't seem to hold a charge, which is expected for something of this age. I'll likely replace them with new NICADs or nickel metal hydride batteries. I started my early programming in BASIC in the late 1970s, and I would have just about killed to have a computer like this when it came out in 1980. While ridiculously underpowered by today's standards, it was innovative for its time and one of a series of pocket computers offered by Radio Shack. I hope you enjoyed this look at a piece of computing history. Please check out my other YouTube videos on retro computing and other topics.